Hi, my name is Renata Marques Leitão, and I'd like to share my reflections on pluriversal design and desire-based design. As I speak from Toronto, I'd like to acknowledge the ancestral and traditional territories of the Mississauga of the Credit, the Haudenosaunee, the Anishinaabe, and the Huron-Wendat, who are the original owners and custodians of the land on which I work and live. As a co-chair of this conference, I asked you, what does the world of many centers look like? What is needed to create this reality? And there are many different perspectives. I speak as a Brazilian Canadian. I was born in Brazil and I moved to Canada. I'm a design practitioner and researcher who has always worked in the Americas, especially in collaborations with indigenous artisans. So I speak from a perspective of collaboration between designers and local communities. What is needed to create this reality? From my experience, one thing that I can share with you is that we need a desire-based design instead of a social need-centered design. When I imagine a world of many centers, I imagine a world in which communities outside of the center of colonial modernity design their life projects. When social designers collaborate with these communities, they tend to focus on their supposed needs and problems and try to reduce suffering and damage. We designers usually see ourselves as problem solvers, and in this frame of mind, we start with a need or problem and look for a desirable solution. I argue that a pluriversal design is not focused on solving problems. And, well, there are many other forms and fields of design focused on problem solving. A pluriversal design aims to nurture alternative models of life and support the flourishment of communities outside the center. I argue that it is necessarily desire-based in contrast with need-centered approaches. In desire-based design, we start by engaging with desire and then look for what is needed. So it's the opposite from starting with a need and looking for a desirable solution. And desire, when I use the word desire, I mean desire as a force, as an impulse towards fulfillment. These ideas about desire emerged from my experience, and I found similar ideas in the work of several authors, as Yves Tucker, Juan Padurai, Paulo Freire, Max Faustini, and the designers Nelson Stoutermann. Today, in this presentation, I will refer to Yves Tuck, Paulo Freire, and Nelson Stoutermann. Even if uh, Padurai and Marcos Faustini are also super important to my work. One of my main references is North American indigenous scholar Yves Tuck and her work on damage center versus desire-based research. So in 2009, she asked the indigenous communities, scholars, and educators to consider the negative long-term impact of damage center research. For her, damage center approaches unintentionally pathologize indigenous communities, reinforcing a one-dimensional narrative of those people was depleted and broken. Tuck argues that this kind of approach operates with a flawed theory of change. Flawed because it assumes that it is outsiders, not communities, who hold the power to make changes. So in damage center approaches, change is created by outsiders, the so-called experts, what is very, very disempowering. Tuck suggests that a desire-based framework is the antidote to damage center frameworks. Nelson Stoutermann said that in our culture, desires are often treated as low-level needs, 
things that we wish but could live without. Several notions of desire refer to cravings of pleasure, material good, recognition, and so on, associating desire with lust and greed. In other words, desire is seen as something superfluous. Another aspect is dissatisfaction, the feeling of lack. Some ideas about desire stress the suffering that the feeling of lack brings. An essential aspect of a consumer society is the promise that our lacks can be fulfilled with a product or a service. Capitalism uses activities such as design and marketing to create dissatisfaction and stimulate overconsumption. So there is no doubt that the desires can be misdirected and manipulated, and consumer society rides on them. And yet, desires are fundamental to any process of creation and change. There is no way we can create a world of many centers without consciously engaging with the force of desire. I understand desire as a bodily, corporeal force related to motivation and joy. We can recognize in our bodies the feelings, what makes our, our heart sing, what turns us on. We all recognize these bodily feelings. Nelson Stoltenberg stated that desire can be understood as the force that provides us with intrinsic guidance and energy. We can harness the powerful corporeal energy that is desire when we conceive projects that excite us. This excitement reveals that we have the energy to strive to materialize it, and that this action will feel as fulfilling. So desire is related to the enjoyment of action. I believe it is the only energy capable of sustaining the long-term engagement necessary to create significant social change. Action motivated by need, even when it's absolutely necessary, feels like a drudgery. I have to do this. I need to do this. So it is necessary, but it is unfulfilling. Again, I'm not, not suggesting that desires are always good. It's not like we are going to follow our, our desires and everything is going to be fine. On the contrary, desires are complex and to engage with them, we have to be aware of their nature. For instance, if Tuck said that desires flashes out that which has been hidden or what happens behind our backs, we might not engage with them, but they are there, influencing our lives. So it's fundamental to bring desires to the light, examine them, become aware of their nature, instead of allowing a first influence. For Nelson and Stoltenberg, to review our desires, we have to name them, reflect upon them, and examine them. We have to give a visible shape to our desires to understand the direction towards which those desires are gesturing, so we can use them as a form of guidance, as a compass. Some ideas about desire associated with the feeling of lack and completion or dissatisfaction. And I have to say that the feeling of lack or incompletion is part and parcel of human experience. Human beings feel inherently incomplete. Paulo Freire describes men and women as beings in the process of becoming, as unfinished, uncompleted beings in and with a likewise unfinished reality. And from this inherent feeling of incompletion or dissatisfaction emerges the desire of change, which is the trigger to design, to create things that could change and ultimately improve the situation. In a desire-based framework, community members design their life projects. So desire can be seen as the inherent impulse towards completion and fulfillment. Even if we will never get there, we have to honor 
missing pose that can be brought into the light by design. One last reflection. When we work with communities struggling with poverty, some people tend to focus on their material needs. So I'd like to leave you with a quote from the economist Marcia Sen. He said, it would be wrong and have a disastrous consequence to consider that poverty is merely a question of lack of material resources. Ultimately, what the poor are denied is their human fulfillment. Thank you very much and I hope you read the full paper because in the full paper I offer several other reflections on the nature of desire. Thank you very much.